What is going on guys? I figured I would give you guys a little update video here because it seems like a lot of you guys appreciate that. And I know that some of you guys are going to be wondering what's going on because it may be a few days here until we have an interesting video up on the channel. So I actually have updates on all three machines. All of the machines are, I guess you could say, down. I don't really like to use that term. Uh, really, the Banshee and the Maverick are in for... Uh, you know, regular maintenance and some upgrades. And then the 250R, I guess you'd have to say that's down. If you guys watch my Silver Lake videos, you saw we fried the top end. So I'm gonna show you those parts. I have everything ready to go. I actually have the new piston and everything. We'll start off with the 250R. Uh, there's the new piston right here. And here is the one that's fried. It's really not horrible. Um, you know, with the exception of the two areas that really got fried, uh, the rest of the piston is not in terrible shape. The skirts are actually pretty decent. Um, there's just those two spots, really, and in the front there that are hammered. And, of course, you can see the rings in the back. They move, but up front, if you really wanted, you could probably dig those out. Obviously, we're not doing that. Um, and on the front here, you can see the wear, just that little bit of a rounded edge. But the top of the piston is not bad. Uh, if you took some steel wool and cleaned that up, it would actually look pretty decent. You can see the head is nice and clean. Everything should be fine with that. And I'll give you guys a look in this cylinder too. And it's really not that bad. Uh, a lot of people were freaking out and saying like, Oh, you ruined your quad. Oh, you put all that money into it and you just destroyed it, you idiot. No, nah, man, it's like 95% there. The rest of the quad is perfectly fine. I, <laughs> I don't know where this whole... You know, frying a, a piston means that you're melting down an entire quad. That's just not the way it is, man. And uh, I, I don't think it's as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. Um, I really enjoyed the dune trip, and it was a huge learning experience. And I want to read one of the comments that I got. I want to give a huge thank you to all you guys. Um, it's a shame that a lot of the negative comments gain traction and end up at the top of the list. Uh, but overall, for that video, the like to dislike ratio is 99% positive. It was mostly positive. I can't tell you how many DMs I got of people reaching out, wanting to help out, and people just sharing their experiences and stuff. Uh, because it happens. It's really a part of the sport. Um, granted, it shouldn't have happened. It was the first time ever being out on this, in the sand dunes. And uh, I think the most constructive comment, at least that I saw, I apologize if I didn't see your comment, um, that video got an insane amount of comments. And all my, I think it has, um, it's getting close to 100,000 views now. I, I can't keep up with everything. But I did notice uh, a certain comment. Actually, um, my parents pointed it out to me. They were reading through the comments. And I just thought that this was a great comment. And I just want to read this really quick before I show you the cylinder. So this is from Beta Rider. It says, I did not read through all the comments before posting this. It may have already been said several times. I know I'm not a know-it-all, but I know a whole lot about this topic. I'm a Yamaha master technician and have built, jetted, and tuned, and repaired a whole bunch of two-stroke engines, including both outboard motors and motorcycles. If you will pay attention to the video, you will notice that all of the cylinder and piston damage is on the exhaust sized fr or front of the engine. This is telling you that the engine did not starve for lubrication, nor did it overheat. If either of these things happened, the piston cil and cylinder would be scored all the way around. This is a classic case of engine running too lean. The exhaust side of the piston expanded too much, too much from the intense heat created from the lean running condition. The roughness in the cylinder is aluminum from the piston that melted and stuck to the cylinder wall. It's called transfer. It is highly unlikely that the melted vent hose on the carb caused the engine failure, although they must be repaired. If you jet any engine to run its best on fairly level dirt sur on a fairly level dirt surface, you must increase the size of the main jet two to three sizes if you're going to ride it in deep sand. If you are if you are you are already running on borrowed time, the hill climb just sped up the process dramatically. Beautiful machine, by the way. I hate to see something bad happen to someone that is so meticulous and dedicated to the sport. God bless. Um, so stuff like this, this is really how I learned. So beta rider, thank you so much for posting that comment for me and all of the subscribers to see, because if I had read that before going out to the sand dunes, I would have jetted up the quad and this probably would have never happened. Um, running in the sand was just a huge strain on the machine. I also had people commenting that the whole shot tires that I run in the front really are not the best for sand and they cause a lot of drag. Uh, because I was saying in the video, it feels like the brakes are, it's almost like you're riding with the brakes. Uh, and it did seem like the Banshee was a little bit better. These tires are kind of, they're almost like a sand tire. If you didn't have the knobbies on the side, this one kind of line of tread down the middle seemed to work pretty nice. Uh, but somebody was telling me 
a few people actually that these whole shot tires are not very good for sand. So had I known that stuff, you know, like I said, this probably wouldn't have happened. So learn from my mistakes. And hopefully if you guys have never ridden in deep sand and you're going to go out to the sand dunes, you got to jet up your bike. You're better off running it fat than running it lean because you can see what happens. So I will try to give you guys a good look in this cylinder. It's really not bad. Um, there's a little transfer right there, I believe from the piston. And then over here, this is the spot that looks so bad but that's all aluminum from the piston. You can feel it's raised up, so we should be able to get rid of that. And the rest of this actually feels pretty smooth. I don't feel any gouges or anything. Um, and this is also a sleeved cylinder. Uh, so a lot of people were saying, you know, to get this, you, you can't just ball hone this. It's gotta be re a sealed. Um, but it is a sleeved cylinder, which is a little bit more forgiving than a nickel seal cylinder. I think we're going to be okay since it's a sleeve cylinder. So I do have a ball hone on the way. Now I had planned to have this thing already back together, uh, but I just called Summit Racing today where I ordered the ball hone and the damn thing is on back order. It's not supposed to ship out until the 18th, which is ridiculous. Not any fault of Summit Racing or anything. They ship it directly from the manufacturer. There's just been delays with all the COVID stuff. So I found another person that I uh, supposedly has them in stock. It should be here. I think they said Tuesday which is in, what's today? Today is Wednesday, so next Tuesday it should be here. So we won't have to wait too long. If it was shipping out the 18th, wouldn't get it until the 25th or whatever. That's just way too long. So I canceled the order from Summit Racing. I did get the Flex Hone oil. This is for the Flex Hone. You can see that's what a Flex Hone looks like right there. It's like a, also known as a ball hone. It's uh, really the way to go, at least as far as I know. And uh, you oil up the cylinder with this stuff, and then we run the hone through, and then we'll clean it out. Uh, this stuff is also known as Panther Piss, if you were to ask JST or Justin Sturgill Trucking. Justin, what's the stuff you spray in there before you hone it? Uh, it's called Panther Piss. The Panther Piss? Hold on, let me go get you a can of Panther Pee. Right here yeah, yeah. is what Panther Pee yeah. is. But it's called Panther Piss. You just spray a little Panther Piss on this. Panther Piston. And I do want to take a second and just say thank you, Justin, for all the help you gave me on the trip. And I want to thank out my buddies, Matt and Justin. You know, everybody helped out so much. Uh, but really, if Justin didn't have his rig there with literally a full service set of tools, I don't think I would have been able to get done nearly as much work. We definitely couldn't have pulled the head of the 250R, at least not as easily as we did. And um, after he saw the issues that we had with the carburetor, dude, this guy went ahead and sent me out a brand new 39 millimeter PWK um, that he had ordered from LED. Now he's running a Lectron, which I know you guys want me to run. Of course, that will be breaking the bank. Uh, so he had this one sitting on the shelf and he said he's never going to use it. And uh, I offered to trade him, I offered to throw him some cash for it. And he was like, dude, it would be better off on your bike. I'd like to see it go into use. So thank you so much for this carb. We're going to run the, the regular 39. Uh, you will notice it is not an air striker. So this is the 38 millimeter flat side and the air striker design. You can see the hose is coming out of the top. And that's actually one of the ones that got fried. So there are less lines coming from this one. I will be transferring over these AP3 lines because they're a trick and they will definitely complete the look of the bike. By the way, guys, if you are interested in custom colored lines for any of your carbureted machines, hit up ap3racing.com and use the code SABO20 and you'll get 20% off any of the lines they have on there. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be running this 39 millimeter. Thanks again, Justin. And I want to give DBC Racing a huge thank you. Also, they saw that my machines were getting pretty hot out there on the sand dunes. So they sent me some engine ice for the Banshee and for the 250R. And this was something that a subscriber had suggested to me. It's called Sabre by Amsoil. And if you look on the box, it says tested and proven at 100 to 1, which is insane. So that is a two-stroke um, premix for uh, I guess any two stroke really. And it's supposed to mix really well with race gas because from what I understand, um, a lot of two stroke oils, they like to separate once you get into racing fuels. So I'm not really familiar with racing fuels. Uh, the 110 that I'm running in the 250R, it's the first time I've ever done a racing fuel. And uh, I guess the oil and the gas like to separate. And the fact that you can run it, uh, what my subscriber was saying, he's heard of guys running it at 80 to one, which even that is, is crazy. But the fact that it says 100 to one, I think I'm going to try like 50 to one <laughs> because even that's kind of on the lean side for me. Uh, but he was showing me some pictures of guys that run at 80 to one after years of use and the, the pistons look great. So, uh, it doesn't smell as good as being I'm not going to lie, at least not, uh, in the bottle, maybe it'll burn and it'll smell a little bit better, but you know, we're going for functionality here. And then of course this is a 
Um, bore scrubber, this is just to clean out the bore. Once we do our flex home, we'll get all the uh, little metal shavings and whatnot out. Then we'll be able to throw our piston in and we should be good to go. I did make a little leak down tester. Um, I had one before, but it was for the Banshee and I kind of had to rig it up. This one should work perfectly. You see it fits right inside our boot here. And once that's oriented correctly, that'll be really easy to use. And then on this side, I have a plug for the exhaust. And then you do have to plug up um, this little jet that's on the power valve. But that way we'll be able to get an accurate leak down test once we put the new top end on. And yes, because I know someone's gonna mention it, um, I was trying to take this spacer plate off and then I stopped myself because it's on there so good, there's really no purpose in breaking that loose and putting another gasket on here. Uh, I'm sure that's sealed just fine. So I just cleaned off the gasket right there and we're gonna be leak down testing it anyway. So if we have any leaks, we can always pop it right back off. And I already cleaned up the surfaces here. That spray on gasket material does clean off pretty easily, but I just wanted everything to be ready to go. So as soon as that ball hone comes in, we will be able to get this thing together because I wanna ride this thing. I like literally <laughs> have not ridden the 250R almost at all. So done a lot of work, man, and months and months of work. I wanna ride it. The Banshee's gonna be getting a little bit of work too. So the Banshee ran really good at the dunes. Um, it pulled really hard. And after riding some other Banshees at the dunes, I did notice that, you know, it could be these paddle tires, which quite honestly, I, don't th I didn't think they were horrible. People were saying that these paddles were gonna make me hate the machine and that is not the case at all. Uh, you definitely had to get some speed going, but once you got going, I mean, it was pulling wheelies and stuff. So I, I thought they were okay. Uh, anyways, after hearing all the two meat pipes on all the bikes out there, especially the Banshee Mitten Riders. Man, I do love this SLP exhaust and I think it sounds, it definitely sounds good when you're behind it. And, uh, you know, like if somebody else is riding it and they gun it, it sounds awesome. But at idle, it's not really my favorite. And after hearing those two me's, man, the Tumis just sound awesome. So I am thinking about switching up the exhaust. I'm thinking about maybe going LED or shearer in-frame in pipes. Not 100% sure, but I would like to do that. And I'd also like to port the cylinders, dude. The, uh, the cylinders are not ported on this Banshee. It's got so much power, but the cylinders are just the way they came from driveline performance. I wanted to see the way that they would run. Uh, so I'm thinking about maybe sending the cylinders out for to be ported. And uh, I'll also port match my cases while everything is apart. And we should be able to get a little bit more power out of this thing. And I'd like to get a better sound, like I said, with either LED pipes or some sort of other pipe. So if you guys have suggestions on what kind of pipe I should run on the Banshee, keep in mind, this is a 421 Assassin. So it does need, you know, it can't, I can't run like FMFs or even Tumis are a little bit too small. Um, I need a bigger pipe. These SLPs really do run great. I'm just not that hot on the sound. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is doing a chop and I can cut these mufflers down, make them shorter. And I may do that in the meantime and we'll see if we can make them sound a little bit better. And I believe my FMF exhaust tips would fit in here, which would open up um, the outlets a little bit and probably give it a little bit of a different tone. So I could do that first and see what that sounds like, but it would be cool to run some different pipes on here. Some other mods I'd like to do, I did notice the suspension was just not holding up to the dunes. Um, these are Elka Stage 1s that came with the Banshee. Now, this Banshee is a 1990. Ugh, God only knows when these uh, shocks were added. They, they are exactly the same way that when I bought the quad. I didn't have them rebuilt. I didn't have them valved to my weight or anything. I'd like to at least upgrade to Elka Legacies, which is their Stage 3, I believe. Should be a nice upgrade. It also has an OEM rear shock. And uh, Blake from DBC Racing rode this quad. And he said that he would put his money on it, that the rear shock is blown. So some suspension would definitely improve the ride quality of this thing. And I'm thinking about possibly if I'm going to invest money in suspension, Fireball Racing does make long travel J arms. So I could sell these standard travel plus twos from Fireball, get some long travels and get long travel suspension. And that should make a dramatic improvement in the handling and stability of this quad. And last but not least, I'm also doing some work on the Maverick. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. This machine really rode awesome out on the dunes, saved my ass because we had to drag back the 250R the one day, and we actually ended up taking the Banshee back the other day too because uh, we had some uh, gas leaking issues. Um, but regardless, this thing literally pulled those things in the sand, no problem, 
with these Sedona Coyotes. So I give them, I'm giving these Coyotes a really good rating. I've taken these things out in the mud, taken them out in the sand, and they had awesome grip all the way around. They are definitely good tires and they were affordable. If I remember correctly, they were under $400 for all four tires brand new. You can see I have some of the body panels off uh, behind the seat. Up here, I have a body panel off too. The only issue that I've had with this thing so far is that the, the CVT just gets way too hot. Now, if you guys follow this, the series where I built this thing, that is an, a notorious problem for this thing. This thing is a 2013. It's the first year that they built the Maverick, and that was one of the problems that they had, the CVTs. It just doesn't have enough airflow. There's one um, inlet in the front, and there is there are two outlets. So those are the exhausts right there. And I'm sorry this thing is a mess, guys. I just have everything apart because I've been trying to scheme up an idea. I'm basically thinking about drilling a hole right in the side of the CVT cover and adding a whole nother duct. Because if you look at later years of the Maverick, that's exactly what they did. I believe the hole goes back here and they have a, they have, they have a second duct. But you can see the exhaust runs right next to it. It's just, it's not a good design. And this whole area just gets so hot, especially with the covers and everything on there. You know, it's right next to the motor. It's all caked in really tight and it's just a heat trap. So, you know, the performance is great, but you know, once you start hammering it, the temperature goes up really quick. And when you add in the aftermarket clutch that's in there from CV Tech, that also promotes more heat. It just gets hot really quickly. You know, we have the temperature sensor so you can monitor it, but I'm going to be selling this thing eventually. And I don't want to sell it uh, in the condition that it's in because nobody wants to have to take breaks every, every couple minutes of going hard. You know, if you, if, especially if somebody wants to race this thing, I want it to be bulletproof. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to figure out something to make that thing bulletproof. I did do one thing, but it really wasn't the greatest. If you see in here, that is actually a fan that I added to the intake. So it does work pretty well when you turn that on. It sucks air in and you can feel it come out the exhaust. Uh, but Matt and I tested it and it does do a small amount. It keeps it slightly cool. It gets rid of the heat soak, which is when you let off the gas. It seems that the temperature likes to spike. It got rid of that, but it's still, you have to stop and let it cool down. So I think the second um, intake duct will make a huge difference. Like I said, though, it's just really difficult to figure out where I can run those pipes, where it's going to look okay. It's not going to like hit your feet or it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. It's not the easiest design. Okay guys. So until that flex hone comes in, we can't really do anything with the 250R. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update. I may start working on the budget video for the 250R. Um, a lot of these videos, I wanted to have some riding footage in it. I just don't have any right now because of what happened. So I'm not sure if I want to complete those videos or not. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys are dying to see the budget and that doesn't really require any running footage. So that may be in the near future. And we may even do a bike of the week, uh, because we got a little bit of I guess you could say time on our hands, but there's just nothing really interesting to film until we get um, the parts in. So that's going to be that, guys. When I get the Maverick uh, second tube on there for the CVT, Matt and I will be taking that and torture testing it. We want to make sure that that thing is bulletproof. So that should be coming hopefully not too long in the future. Uh, if you guys saw in the previous videos, I did collaborate with, with Pete Hager. Unfortunately, we both had issues with our quads and we couldn't ride together. But we are planning to go to Little Sahara. I believe um, that Pete's going to make it out there as well. We're going to be going with Justin Sturgill Trucking. Also, uh, we're going all the way across the country, man, because I'm from Philadelphia. And uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long haul. But uh, apparently Little Sahara is like way bigger than Silver Lake. I'll be prepared this time. There's going to be another 250R meetup out there. Uh, a lot of awesome people out there I'm going to meet. I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to bringing you guys some awesome riding footage. So that's what's going to be going on, guys. I appreciate all you guys. Remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.